Wookie dokie physics students. We're back to doing a real lab and a real lab report. So this is the catapult lab. The purpose of this lab is to explain and use the concepts of potential energy, kinetic energy, projectile motion, and the relationship between vertical and horizontal velocity of a projectile that you discovered from previous labs to design and construct a catapult that is as precise as possible. You'll first build a functional catapult that can fire a small projectile. Your initial hypothesis that you'll be working on today will be that you can accomplish building a catapult. Now, a catapult is a device that uses elastic energy to fire a projectile in an arc over an obstruction to hit a target beyond the obstruction. So, your first hypothesis will state um, basically how good your catapult is going to be to hit a target. To do this, you'll state the size of the target you predict all of your shots to fall on. Like, I hypothesize my first catapult will be precise within a 30 centimeter radius target, for instance. Your second hypothesis, which you cannot write till after the entire first methods and data is collected, okay? Um, it should predict how a design change to your initial catapult will improve its precision. Now you're going to have to add details to the second hypothesis about what you will improve, how specifically your improvements will make it better, and how you're going to measure your improvement once you get to the experimental part. So, the new definition for this lab report is elastic potential energy. It's the energy given to an object because of the distance an elastic band is stretched away from its unstretched position. It depends on that distance and the properties of the band. In our virtual class meetings, uh, in this class meeting, we're going to draw some free body diagrams and discuss the basic principles of a catapult. You're then going to research catapults and come to class prepared with diagrams and drawings. This would be what you're going to work on next. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, so that you can start constructing your rubber band propelled catapult. Since this is our final lab, your work needs to demonstrate you understand everything we learned this year. So uh, when we talk about the rubric later, you're going to notice there's a lot more points allotted to definitions, for instance. For full credit, your introduction needs to not only have a free body diagram of your catapult, but must explain how the catapult converts elastic potential energy to kinetic energy. It also must define your shot as a projectile using the term as we discussed it in the Nerf gun lab and explain how the projectile acts once it's released. To do this, you'll say what forces act on it during flight and define each of these forces in the terms we defined them earlier in the year. You'll need to come up with a way to measure the catapult's average horizontal velocity as well as its precision. In other words, how close each shot is to every other shot. Though your hypothesis might concern one of the other physical elements listed for a catapult on the next page, you still need to give a general definition for force, as well as define the specific forces acting upon your projectile at different moments in its journey. For full credit, each definition needs to be within the introduction paragraphs and relate to the elements of your catapult that involve them. So, in order to determine how successful your catapult is, you're going to have to measure a lot of things, which I'll talk about after we look at the free body diagrams and the physics of your catapult. Notice I'm showing only the forces acting on the throwing arm of the catapult, and I've actually omitted the force of gravity. Uh, I have not drawn it. You should make sure that you add the force of gravity to your free body diagram if you draw the forces acting on the throwing arm. Here we see the catapult at launch. So notice the force of my hand in this drawing, is what I'm trying to show here, <laughs> is pulling the throwing arm down against the force of the elastic band which is acting on the throwing arm in the direction indicated here based on the way the band is stretched out. Now this elastic force is caused when the elastic band is stretched beyond its resting point. This gives the band and the throwing arm of the catapult elastic potential energy. Again, in this image, I'm showing specifically the forces acting on the throwing arm, 
though I am labeling the velocity of the marble, and I'll talk about that in a second. Again, I've omitted the force of gravity acting on the throwing arm, though most assuredly it is acting on the throwing arm in a direction headed straight towards the center of the Earth. This diagram shows the catapult at release. So, here the elastic potential energy is converted into kinetic energy, or the kinetic energy of the throwing arm carrying the marble. We can see here now that the throwing arm has a velocity in the direction indicated. Now, my catapult is designed so that there's a little structure at the base that stops the throwing arm in mid-flight. The reason why I did that is because I'm trying to get an arc. I'm trying to get the projectile to go over an obstruction and land beyond it. So we see here that my little uh, structure that I put on the base to stop the throwing arm applies a force on the bottom of the throwing arm. And we see here that the marble is not stopped by the structures of the catapult. So it will continue heading forward with the velocity that the throwing arm had before it was stopped. That is because the marble had momentum given to it by the throwing arm and momentum is conserved. You can think of it another way as since the marble has mass and it is in motion, Newton's first law says unless something stops it, it's going to stay in motion. Remember, that is an aspect of inertia. At this point in the catapult, the marble becomes a projectile. Finally, we see the marble as a projectile. It has some velocity, not in an up or down direction, and the only force acting on it is the force of gravity that has an acceleration in the downwards direction of approximately 9.8 meters per second squared. So hopefully, if well designed, the projectile marble will travel in an arced path while it is a projectile, where it is only accelerating in the downward direction, but has a horizontal velocity that is constant, while its vertical velocity increases in the downward direction. So I also want to point out that we are going to ask you to measure the average horizontal velocity of the projectile. Now, the purpose here is twofold. One is that, you know, technically a catapult's job is to, to transfer energy to a structure that it should, in theory, destroy. <laughs> so it needs some amount of velocity to do this. The projectile does. In a second sense, we're asking you to do that because velocity has been one of the most important measurable aspects of an object in motion that we've examined all year, and we've examined it in nearly every single lab. Since this is the last lab, we're going to want you to measure that horizontal velocity, but we're also going to want you to define it, of course, in the lab report. Now, here you can see all the materials that you have to complete the lab report. I want to point out that there's a rubric here um, for your work in two-week chunks so that you will be receiving a lab report grade for this as well. And then finally, there's a final rubric that, depending on what our school decides as far as grades go, uh, could be your final exam grade for the class. Um, which we will add a 50-point experimental grade to um, in the end, uh, based on the quality of the experiment in the catapult you design.